Hello everyone, so for today's video I'll be explaining my coloring process, at least for something small like this bus commission here. Also fair warning, I'm not very good at making tutorials so please know that I'm definitely not treating this like one. It's merely an explanation of my process but you can definitely still kind of follow the steps that I take in this video as if it was a tutorial but just don't expect any of like full on teaching the steps. On the side of my screen here, you'll also be able to see a tablet cam. I don't really know what to call it, but basically you can actually see my hands doing all the work. And I think it's just fun to see the hand movements of an artist when they're working sometimes. So at some parts, I will be expanding that for you guys so you can see what I do with my hands. And so here I actually have a sketch commission that the client wanted to color and I thought, hey, perfect thing to make into a video that focuses on my coloring process. And the goal here is to make it look like these ones, which are fully finished. And I'm going to just walk you through that entire process. I'm going to keep stuff mostly in real time but speeding up certain parts. So the first thing I actually do is I duplicate the line art layer and I take that bottom layer, I put it on pin light mode and I color it some sort of reddish or hot pink color. And I have some presets here. Usually I just kind of change it around purplish or reddish hot pinks just around that area. And then I take that original line art layer that is on top of that pin light and I clip it onto the pin light. And it just creates this black layer with some color underneath it. And that creates this kind of more personality in the lines because the hot pink that's under that black gets blended onto the colors underneath but you can still retain the crisp lines that you made. This pin light technique or trick is something that I learned from observing how other artists do their line art and I would notice that it wouldn't just be like pure black like there would be other colors underneath it and from what I understand I think some art artists use gradient maps for this on their lines and I had tried that when I was experimenting but I just couldn't really understand how they were doing it. I don't know like I didn't really know how it worked but this pin light trick worked for me and you could probably do it with other modes like color burn or it's not like linear burn or something like that. Basically just something that something that makes the colors darker, not lighter. And what this does is it enables me to color pick from like those itty bitty pixels that I could just zoom in on on the line art, knowing that the color I'm getting already complements the color scheme. And you'll be able to see that later on once I start to color. Or even here, you can already see the effect that the pin light layer has on just the skin color. Like you can see the orangey tint that it has on the skin. And later on, I could just color pick that color from the lips to use on the skin as a shading. So speaking of shading, now that the flats have been laid down, I move on to what I call an underpainting, kind of, just shading underneath the lines. And I'll make this color wheel bigger for you because what I do is I take that base shade and I saturate it by like a little bit, just like enough. And I use that as my initial shading color. And I usually go for the cheeks first, like the blushy area for some reason. I don't really know why. And here I'm also taking some of that shade that the pin light layer has created on the lips to just add like a deeper type of red on the cheeks for that blush. And as for switching between redder or more yellower shading colors, 
I kind of just switched between them because this character's skin is more on the golden side, and so anything really works with it. Usually I do tend to go with a redder shading color because later on I outlined that shading with a more yellow color. If that makes sense, you'll see it later on. And as for the location of the shadows, I just put them where I expect there to be shadows on the person's face, you know, the inner corners of your eyes, underneath your eyes, on your eyelids. But for this case, this character has monolids. Um, later on, underneath the nose, the lips, I just use the same shading color. And around the perimeter of the face, where the hair touches the skin and would create shadows, I also added there. Don't know when I stopped doing it, but I kind of tend to just do all the shading within one color on the same layer. I stopped doing different layers for shading. I guess I just didn't really need it anymore because I do a lot of overpainting. And I also do tend to use the same brush for everything. So as you can see right now, I'm using my line brush that I made myself. And this is the same brush that I use for the line art, actually, and I use it for shading also. But sometimes I do use softer brushes to create gradients, like the blush that I initially did on her cheeks. As for the hair, there's not too much that goes on here for the underpainting or under shading because it is very, very dark hair. I usually don't like to add too much shading to dark hair because I just think it looks nice, like being that dark and flat. But this time around, I do use that pen light color and I color pick it and use it as the shading. And at times for darker hair, just so that it doesn't look too flat, I grab that skin color, I like turn it up to like full saturation almost, and I put it where the hair is touching the skin, just to like add a little gradient to the hair. And it kind of reminds me of a glow somehow, like as if the skin is glowing so much that it's like glowing onto the hair. I don't know, it doesn't make sense. Honestly, I just saw some other artists do this before in the past and I've learned to apply it in certain ways that work with my art. And now that the underpainting is done, in the past I did shade the lines before like this and I didn't like to work with black lines, I would shade them like so just to help with the overpainting process so there isn't as much like harsh black colors. But nowadays I just leave it black uh, because I just tend to like the look of it more. Like it doesn't really bother me to work with very harsh blacks anymore. And so moving on to the overpainting step, I will be working on a layer above everything as you can see here and it is exactly as it sounds. It's literally just painting over everything that I have just done. Painting over the lines, painting over the shading that I just did. It's just truly, truly fine tuning everything. And here you can see I'm outlining the shadows that I created earlier with a more yellowy shadow. This is something that I also got from observing artists that I really love because I noticed that they would outline their shadows with warmer uh, tints of that same shadow color and then I tried it one day with my art and I was like, whoa, that looks pretty cool. And you will see that I really do just color pick a lot and I just heavily, heavily depend on the colors that that pin light layer gives me. So working with the eyes, I like to try to blend the lines into the skin. 
And honestly, I feel like I'm going to say this so many times, but once again, this thing that I'm doing with the eyes, uh, kind of just blending it into the skin a little bit more and getting rid of too much black in it is something that I learned from observing other artists' work. And that is just like a crucial, crucial part of improvement, in my opinion. And this moment is one of my favorite things to do when it comes to the eyes is outline the lashes with kind of the same hot pink color that I would use for the pin pin light layer. And I honestly just color picked this from the pin light layer too. And it just makes the eyes pop out so much more. I just love how it looks. I do this for both the top lashes and the bottom lashes and then later on I use the same color basically as my darkest shade for the skin and I use it on the perimeter to almost outline all of the line art. So at this point, I think I'm really just running out of things to say. I don't really know how to explain this stuff anymore because this is where like my tutorial skills come into play and this is why I'm bad at it is because I just can't teach people. A lot of this stuff in knowing where to put shadows comes from observation. I did a lot of observing pictures of people, observing them in real life, and seeing where the shadows fall on their face. And with that, I took it to my art and I stylized it. And now I can pick and choose which shadows I want to include and which ones I want to omit. So here with the nose, I mainly just focus on that shadow around the nostrils and a little bit on the actual nose itself just to give it a little depth like I don't go too much on the bridge uh, yeah I honestly don't know how else to explain it except just like I almost just naturally do it now when I overpaint and the same thing for the lips is I just kind of know nowadays to make the top lip darker than the bottom lip and I include like a highlight on the side of the bottom lip and this is something I know specifically where I got it. I started doing it after seeing it on the Hunter x Hunter anime and ever since then I just I love how it looks and right now you can see that I'm just going over those black lines and kind of replacing them with lines that are more uh, with colors that are more coherent with the lip color and I'm like outlining the black lines with other colors and this is kind of just stuff that goes with developing your art style and knowing what you like to see knowing what your hand kind of naturally tends to do and I really do love how these uh, lips turned out and right now I'm adding that highlight. Here I'm taking a yellower shade and I'm outlining the lips with that a little bit. I don't even know why I did that. 
I guess it just adds like a little bit of a gradient to it. Doesn't make it look too harsh because I am using a very hard edged brush that I kind of want to create almost like a fake gradient. Going over some of, some more of those black lines that I hadn't seen before. And at this point, the skin is pretty much done. The only thing left is to outline the perimeter of the skin with that hot pink or like reddish hot pink color that I talked about before. It doesn't even have to be a super, super dark pink. Just honestly, whatever works. I guess I went with a lighter color this time. So what I tend to do now is I do the highlights and usually the ones on the cheeks, I outline them with the same yellowish uh, shading color that I use just so that they could pop out more and become a little bit more visible. I used to actually use a glow layer for these highlights, but I think at one point I decided that it looked too harsh and now I just color pick a lighter color or like I do it manually and then I just add that onto the skin. As for the hair and clothes, I just really don't do much and it's not really much I can explain because once again the shadows on the hair is something that kind of just learn as you go on with your art journey. I tend to just follow the flow of the hair when it comes to the shadows. And these days I like to use blacks as shadings for hair. And for the clothing, I really don't shade that much. I tend to just go back in and um, replace those black colors with shading colors for the clothes. And so yeah, I won't be explaining over that part and for the very last thing before I go and just let you watch the video, I do liquefy as my very last step before finally sharpening the image just to give it a more crisp feeling. Then boom, the piece is done and I can send it off to a client or post it on Twitter if it's not a commission. So yeah, that's just it for me speaking and I'm going to be dipping and just letting you enjoy this sped up portion where I color the hair and clothes and wrap up the video. As for that, thank you for watching and I really hope that you've enjoyed this video and it isn't just me babbling on about my process. I hope you maybe learned something new from it and can use it to improve your own art. So yeah, thank you for watching and please subscribe and like if you haven't already. It really helps a ton and it's one step closer to getting monetized. Goodbye!